Hello everyone, welcome to Deaf Mute Studio and this is another fucking podcast. Today I have with me Jed Backland. Again. And Matt Owen. Hello. Hi gents, so let's get right to it. Can I just say, is this going to be every week? Well, it's not going to be next week because no. we're away on a set. Yeah. I've got no time or patience for every week, so oh, make the most of it. Get, get to fuck then. Don't want you. Please come back. No? Can, I, can I ask a question? Yes. Is today really about the Fisher King? No. Because I... I I've, both, got a, I've got a feeling you're going to make it about the Fisher King, though. Both me and Matt have, have produced uh, extensive notes uh, regarding go. the Fisher King. Uh, go to the pitches last night, did you? <laughs> have a chin wag, eh? <laughs> Carry on. <coughs> I mean, do you want to talk about the Fisher King? Uh, we will at some point, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you should get it in. Some that and Charlie's Angels. Yeah. You've got us pegged. Yeah, I, I know what you two like when you get together. <laughs> it's just the same when he gets one of us on our own. It's always a, a plot against the other. He's very good at just it. Just turning the screws. <laughs> right, so today... It, it, it's something I want to speak about today because I feel like when the trailer came out that uh, we, we didn't really go too in-depth on it. It was just mainly just a general comments here or there about it and I'd, mm. I, I I for one would like to uh, get your thoughts on Terminator Dark Fate and also all things to do with Terminator in, in relation to Dark Fate and where mm-hmm. the franchise is now mm-hmm. so we'll start off with the trailer for Terminator Dark Fate I said to Matt last night um, that it was probably one of the worst trailers I've ever seen in terms of, of what was being shown and in terms of how it was edited. It, 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 I mean, Terminator Genesis had a pretty bad trailer as well. I actually laughed during the Terminator Genesis trailer, the bit where he, he jumps off the helicopter. Uh, but but there was no laughs in this one. Not, there, was, there was not even a laugh in this one. I, I don't, as, as Matt said last night, it doesn't really feel or look like a Terminator film to me. Uh, apart from the big robots running around in it that have been sent back through time, apart from that, it, it, it doesn't look and it doesn't feel like one. Um, I said, I said to me girlfriend, he, he's got absolutely zero interest in Terminator in general. Uh, I was saying to her that Linda Hamilton, to me, it looks like she looks like she's forgotten how to act. It's not and her face though, is it anymore? It's not. It's not a face. <laughs> you're quite right. Her. Yeah. Maybe she's forgotten her face as well, but it, it's it's. I just I don't know. There's something really, really dodgy. I'm a. I get excited every time. There's there's going to be a new Terminator film. I think right, okay, they're they're going to bring it back. They're going to do something really great. And you get so much promise, and you get get so much, you know, hinted at. And and you know, of course, Edward Furlong's back this time. I'm like, oh right, okay, maybe James Cameron is involved. Okay, maybe there'll, there'll be something something worthwhile, but. All the signs so far, especially from the trailer, uh, it's, e- e- even the title. The title doesn't inspire anything exciting in, uh, t- to me anyway. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, again, you can be very, as we were discussing the Joker last week, you can be very harsh on something you haven't seen. Um, but uh, all everything that I've seen so far, you know, it, it's, it's not looking good, personally, from my point of view. Yeah, no. uh- Going back further in the trailer, I remember when the Hollywood Reporter they put like an uh, like an interview out, and it was a shit down with Tim Miller and James Cameron, and uh, I thought oh, that's a bit strange that they're doing that, like to announce it, like they opened the Paramount lap, they let fans in, um, and you know they, they shot this interview, and that was the first thing I seen on here. This was back in twenty seventeen, so it's only it's only two years ago this, um, and they they put ev- they laid all the cards on the table. They explained why they were doing it. Um, they were explaining, you know, that they're making one film and based on the success of that, it could turn into three films, could be two films. They might shoot the second and third concurrently back to back. Um, and they, they talked about they had this writer's room, which had like David Goyer in it, who's, you know, mm-hmm. in his own yeah. right, he, he's been involved in, in, in a lot of uh, good projects. Um, the geezer who wrote um, Terminator. Oh, I just don't have to say this. The Sarah Connor Chronicle. <laughs> say that three times fast. <laughs> Sarah Connor Chronicle, Sarah Connor Chronicle. <laughs> you can't, can you? It's just so hard. So they, they had someone there who's kind of 
but as he'd been on board, they had James Cameron, they had Tim Miller, um, and they, 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 they basically put all the cards on the table. Nothing was, according to them, nothing wasn't, no stone was left unturned. And um, it came across straight away. I was like, oh, I need to send this on to you. Because it, it did, that, that one video of listening to James Cameron and Tim Miller talk about it, kind of restored, kind of erased from Terminator 3 onwards everything that had gone. I know you're a fan of salvation and, and, and stuff, and um, but f- for all that, that, that was like no longer, never happened, essentially, is, is what James Cameron said. And it gets to the point where Tim Miller is actually crying in the interview. <laughs> and I, I didn't know if that was a good or bad thing at first. What I'd say now is, having seen the latest trailer, it was a fucking very bad thing. <laughs> I think he's been given a project which uh, is just too big to wrangle, essentially. Mm. And, you know, Cameron is doing the Avatar films and, you know, he's probably doing some deep sea dive um, 3D experience. So I, I don't know what it'll be, but, you know, but essentially he got his child back after how many years? And it just seems like he's cashed in and gone, you know what? He made Deadpool. That, that was quite funny, that. And um, there was kind of a lot going on special effects wise. Maybe he could handle it. And I know Tim Miller's worth. He, he a lot of special effects and he did a lot for Avatar and stuff and obviously those guys know each other and know each other work and stuff but tonally it's I just think it's a million miles away like visually the, the visual tone again is just nowhere near the original I mean to to, the sequel. to to supply a uh, opposite end of the spectrum opinion after watching the trailer first time yeah I, I completely agree with you, but in comparison to all the other Terminator films and trailers, are you not intrigued by the fact that there's no real big, there's no buildings exploding, no helicopters, no big massive car chases, it all seems quite grounded. It seems it it seems very, very Logan. You can see this being like a, a long road trip. Of course, again, I haven't seen Logan because I don't watch films. Um, so, I, 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 I can't comment on that. It, it does look a bit. It does look a bit. I, I believe the, the one of the main characters. She's Mexican, isn't she? Is she supposed supposed to be Mexican? The the, the girl in yeah, it. Yeah, the little the youngest. Yeah, yeah, she's supposed to be Mexican. Edith, female Edward Furlong. Female Edward Furlong. I don't know whether they're going for you know the um the scenes in, in Terminator Two where, where they did they, they go to Mexico, don't they? Did yeah, they cross yeah, the yeah. border, yeah. Enrique. Enrique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it kind of you know, it kind of got a bit of a, that feel, you know, that you know, arming up in the middle of the desert sort of thing. Um I d I don't know. I mean did, is it a T one thousand in it again? Is that what it is what I that don't is? Know what it is. New model. New model. Complete new model. Is it? Called, I watched the Hollywood Reporter mm. interview again last night to make sure that it, it was how I remembered it, mm. and, and that's what they talk about. And it's a, I think it's a hybrid, isn't it? Mm. And I, again, it splits into yeah, two. two. So I think it's like a, an endoskeleton, and instead of the flesh, it's t- covered in T one thousand, which imitates flesh, mm. which would explain how they sent the T one thousand back in the second film, even though in the first film they say nothing dead will go, so it doesn't make sense. To right, yeah. The T one thousand could even get back, but you know. I'm not talking about the nuances. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you just accept these things. Just accept these. Maybe you can imitate flesh, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the line. That's the line that you have to use for the little trailer bit, surely. Yes. Surely. Um, including that bit. Including that bit. And this and bit this now. And this bit now. Yeah. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> um, but, but what happened then? Just now, sir. <laughs> when are we in now? <laughs> now, sir. When was then? Now. <laughs> Spaceballs was due to come up. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right, so I know you touched on it, Matt, with the return of James Cameron. Mm. Uh. I don't see this as a good thing. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, you say, you know, of these he's getting he's getting the rights back. He's been technically, supposedly Involved in some way in in all of the sequels so far. Oh, he, he you know Jonathan Mosto said, oh, he's give give it Terminator Three: Rise of Machine. Just give it, you know, add his blessing. Uh, you know, the famous McG 
had the same thing. Oh yeah, James, James Cameron's watching. He's, he's he's you know at the time anyway, at least before the film came out. So I oh, know he, he's he's happy with what I've done. And also Genesis. And Gen- yeah. Gen- yeah, and it's like, well, you know, is he actually watching them or, or is he just trying to get them out the house? Oh yeah, no, that, that's fine. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. As soon as he shuts the door, load of shit. I mean, we've all I've been there. We've all it. It's like, Zaz, are you sure you don't want me to stay a little bit longer around the house? I can complete. No, no, no. You're all right. Just, just, just get, get get the fuck out. Yeah. I, I want to go to the pub. Back to your mum's. Yeah. Um, no, I, I I don't think it's a him having the rights back. I thought the only the only way you're going to make a a truly you know passable sequel, in my opinion, is if he if he's involved in the writing and directing of it. Um, it's it's his bait. You know, it was his fever dream, wasn't it? Mm. You know, it's, no, it wasn't actually found that out last night. Was it? Was it? I've also heard it was based on a, a short story. Was it so, called The Soldier? Yeah, well, it, it's an Outer Limits, two Outer Limits episodes. Of there we go. He's watched that, hasn't he? He's watched that, he's fell, watched as- <laughs> fell asleep. I thought, I've got this great idea for a film. Nah, we've all been there. We've all been, yeah. yeah. The Daywalker. <laughs> I've got this great idea about uh, a vampire who can walk around during the day. I'm thinking of Wesley Snipes for the lead. Wait, where- <laughs> yeah, mate, you've just you've just pitched Blade there yeah. to yourself in your dreams. <laughs> We've all done it. We've uh, all dreamt about we've black all done men it. in leather jackets running around, <laughs> killing the undead. Yeah, stabbing things with a sword. <laughs> I, I I did exactly the same when I worked in um, <laughs> I worked in the in the in a garage when I was younger, about nineteen, and um, mostly between the hours of like ten at night and four in the morning, all you get is taxi drivers coming in, and these are these always come in, and you seem the most lonely, lost souls, you know, buy a Twix and make conversation with you. And I started writing notes and I thought, right, I've got a great idea for a film. It's about a taxi driver, right? And he and he's and he's broken and he's depressed and he's lost and he's thinking about doing something, something really big. I should call it ta- oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we've all done it. So you're not you're not by yourself there on that one. Uh, what were we talking about? James Cameron's return. James Cameron's return. Um Unimportant, really. I, you know, I, I, I think, I think there's people out there who could get what Terminator is about and not need him to be involved in yeah. any way and and make a, a really really good film. The fact that he's involved doesn't mean anything, especially after his endorsement of everything else. So, you know, I'm, I'm just disregarding him. You know, carry on with Avatar 49 or whatever you're making now, yeah. and um, see you soon. No, I, I agree to an extent. I think it's a buy-in, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's a buying straight away, and if Cameron's back, oh, it might have the magic of Terminator One. They might go really low fi on it and 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 make something which is low budget and really visceral and stuff. But you can tell by it from the trailer that's not going to happen. No, it's certainly not going to merit, um, you know, the aesthetics of Terminator Two and 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 capture the scale of that. I, I do think what they'll try and do is they'll try and. Kind of what you said with the road trip, maybe I think it'll kind of mm-hmm. try and be Terminator One and t- like take elements from them both. Yeah. I mean, Terminator One's essentially a, a, a slasher film, in it? It's, yeah, it's yeah. just this Hulk and monster chasing these two, um, these two characters. The second film's more expansive, in it? It's just yeah. balls out action, wall to wall. Um, still some great stuff in there, and you know, at the time. So much was hung on the fact that Terminator 2, the special effects, how cut and edge it was. Um, Terminator 1 had just the fact that it was low budget, but it still had these amazing effects. You know, it mixed stop motion, it mixed miniatures, um, like it had all the force perspective shots, everything the camera had learned from Roger Corman. You know, he put so much into it, like with the map paintings that he did for Escape from New York and all, all that sort of the future. In LA, like the, uh, th- those scenes for me look fucking brilliant. They are brilliant. They, they must have cost nothing to make. They must have. They could have literally just gone and got a load of concrete, strapped fucking dynamite to it, fucking blew it all up, and then had these people you know, running through it and that. And mm-hmm. I, I don't see any of those elements being implemented in in the next one, and I think that would have been really interesting if rather than go, oh, we'll, we'll get we'll get three hundred million for this. Because obviously Cameron can curry that type of fucking favour and, and get and get stuff back like that straight away. But I think it's just really interesting in general for a lot of filmmakers rather than going, 
to the top end go right well you know what we made the original Terminator for six million dollars you know let's at least make it for 10 times let's make it for 60 million let's make it for 30 million mm. or yeah. let, let's try and do the same thing again the equivalent now. bring, yeah. bring the equivalent the, force the creativity back with a lower budget mm. yeah completely put yeah. yourself in a box yeah yeah mm-hmm. and be creative for getting out of it and mm-hmm. you know find new ways of doing it and I, I just think Cameron's too obsessed with technology yeah. Technology that doesn't exist. <laughs> Until it's sent back through time. And so, yeah, exactly. I think that's what the films are really about. It's about <laughs> how we fucking manifest <laughs> this creative process, basically. It's a loop. Yeah. But I, I, no, I don't necessarily see him being back as a, as a positive. No. Do, do you think the franchise as a whole relies far too much on the past? And ironically, it doesn't look towards the future because people like over concentrate on Cameron being back. Obviously Arnie seems to be for some reason a mainstay of the franchise yeah. when it's it's not about Arnie, it's it's much bigger. Obviously Eddie Fairlong's coming back, Linda Hamilton's coming back. Yeah. The, it seems to be a franchise with zero progression. I mean the the recycle this the same movie time and time again with each sequel, mm-hmm. there and thereabouts. It's mm-hmm. always based on time travel. It's always like he regular people come up against this killing machine. It, mm. Surely there's more to that that universe than just them elements. We'll probably get onto it a, a bit later. I know it's in, in the notes for it, but that's why I have a soft spot for Terminator Salvation. Because it it it's it stops the going back through time yeah. thing and, and we're just focused on a period that we that we know is coming. Um, it's not it's not it's not perfect by any means. I, after so much as I struggle to say it's a good film even, I just think you know, out of all of them, it's it's, it's been the better. It's 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 tried. It's tried to be something different. Not tried to be either the first or the second one. Tried to be something a bit different. But we'll probably get onto that a bit later. But yeah, I I, I agree with you. It doesn't. It, it they seem to be scared of doing something different, completely completely different with it. It's it's machines back in time chasing people, and and you know, the first the first film is is fantastic. The second one is is almost just as good. Um, but yeah, they don't seem to be able to get out of that that button, and it, it's baffling that nobody sits down when, when it's like, right, okay, I've I've got a script for the the new Terminator film, and you know we open and you know with a robot chasing somebody through the present day that somebody doesn't go, we've done this already, mm-hmm. and and none of the sequels have have been very good. Well, why don't we try and do something different? It's it's baffling. Mm-hmm. That. I would rather see rather than try and hash out the same characters over and over again. I would rather watch. Comedy about a Terminator reprogrammed that was written in Greg's because at least it was fucking different. <laughs> at least it was fucking different. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah. You're right. It, 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 all those, all those sequels that have done that, they've rehashed it, they've brought them back in. Like, there's loads of great ways that you could get Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton into it. Mm-hmm. Loads of fucking great ways. Like, you know, I, I, the whole idea that a Terminator, like I think it's a hundred year, it's got a hundred year lifespan on it mm-hmm. with the battery that it's got. So right, okay, so set it in the future. Arnie's not there, but you want Arnie in it. All right, well, you know, straight away, like, how do you get around that? I'll fucking take the chip out of its head, which you seen you can do, and fucking stick it in your iPhone. Right? <laughs> if it's a learning fucking process, I think you know whatever. Mm-hmm. I, imagine seeing Arnie, or well, not Arnie, but imagine seeing it represented as a, a, a different piece of technology that people are familiar with. Mm-hmm. I, I, even if it was like an hour fucking, I don't know, like an hour fucking Windows 95, Blappy or something <laughs> like that. Do you know what I, mean? I, I don't know. I just think there's loads of... Or a chessboard from uh, Terracana Chronicles. That was a, that that, was a, that a was good really idea. Good. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. So you should revisit that before I watch the next. I didn't finish watching that. I, I, I really should. It's, it, it kind of... Well, you you lent you lent me them for like four years, and I got through like three oh. three episodes. Yeah, so yeah, I got through one. Yeah. If you could send them back in time, for me, <laughs> so I'll get them four years back. Torch them. But yeah, I mean, it 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 just it really does seem to me like it's just <clears> that there isn't much in, in terms of ideas in the well. It's just everyone's focused on Arnie being back. Oh, Arnie's got to be in it. And every film, Arnie is in it. He, like, Salvation had that terrible CGI cameo. It's like, I, I get with Salvation. I didn't that, mind that. I'll, I'll say that much for that. I thought, 
Okay. I'm having enough. I'm having enough. I mean, yeah, like with with Salvation, it was there was a lot of referencing going on, Mm. which I I kind of liked. It it wasn't. I was on board with it. Was at that point, it was quite nostalgic to Mm. go. Oh well, it's clearly been a lot of love in here. Mm. Thus the references, but it's Arnie isn't. Yes, he's the Terminator, but he's not. He doesn't make that will. The, the, oh. That universe can spin easily without him, and you don't need. I mean, when I saw him coming back for Genesis, and he was old, and he's diving <laughs> out of a helicopter, <laughs> and using the same fucking lines over and yeah. over again, I was just like, "What do people honestly expect to get from this film? It's mm. it's it's just going to be shocking." Uh, is the a suggestion in the new trailer that he's playing a human. Do you think he's playing a human? No, I just think he's playing in in like the lore of it. It'll be the skins aged on him, won't it? And mm. he's still a robot under it. Mm. But they've engaged that chip that's in the deleted scene in Terminator Two. Mm-hmm. The, the the learning process. I think mm-hmm. they've reset that. Oh, I, th- right, I yeah. think I think he'll be like he'll be like an oracle or something like that. I don't mm. know. I think Sarah will just be this burnt out fucking woman who's kind of in limbo, having mm-hmm. dealt with whatever there was. Mm-hmm. Like, what does she do next? I mean, a standalone film about what Sarah Connor had done since Terminator 2 would be more interesting than like a character study rather than a Terminator yeah, yeah, film. Yeah. But the reason, like for Terminator 3, the reason why she refused to be in it is because she said, well, my character's came full arc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so, for it to say no to Terminator 3, which was the first, I don't know, Lost Stars? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ter- was it just Terminator 3? Rise, Rise, Rise of the Machines, Machines, yeah. yeah. So, for it to say no to that, but then to say yes to this, I'm thinking, ah, you know, m- maybe there's vindication in the fact that she's only said yes now, that mm-hmm. maybe it will be good, but... I wouldn't hang my hat on it because at the end of the day, everyone's got to fucking make a living, haven't they? <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. it, it's a very popular thing now to be, come back to an old. Like, I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis came back to Halloween. You got uh, Harrison Ford coming back to Blade Runner. It, it just seems like the in thing now. But I've not seen Halloween, but I've heard good reviews. Obviously, I thought Blade Runner twenty forty nine was incredible. Yeah. So maybe they took a bit of. A bit of spice from that, and threw it in there, mm. in there, little pot of scouse. I think they'll be having the runs, <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I, that that would be nice. That would be nice to think, but I don't know. I just I see the hole in the donut. I don't see the donut when it comes to that, that franchise. Yeah. Now that's that's the issue with it. You know what I mean? It's kind of. The glass is half empty instead of half full. Mm-hmm. And I mean, maybe that's just being cynical because of the way the other films have panned out. But it is a shame. But I think us as fans have been really mistreated when it comes to Terminator. We had, yeah. I mean, we we were all excited in college with Terminator Three oh, Rise of the Machines God, yeah. coming out. So much. And I think that's the day Terminator died for me. <laughs> I, I got a little bit, a little bit back from Salvation, but it, it's not a great not film. It's, no. it's not. No. I mean, I, the trailer spoiled the entire film. I can't, I'm still struggling how that went past. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. all sorts. And then Genesis, I didn't even watch because I, I checked out. Not even Dragon Tits could save that, could she? No. Not one bit. No, oh, that's just an awful, awful film. What, what was that French. scene that we burst out laughing at? It was the, getting changed. Yeah, it was the scene. I mean, bear in mind, you used to... Uh, Termin- you know the original Terminator, Sarah Connor, this this you know little helpless waitress character who, who's who's got to start learning to be tough and run for her life. The second one, she's you know probably the toughest person around. Yeah. She becomes a Terminator. She becomes a ter- you know she, she she she's seen some shit. Um, that'll and turn then, her white. That'll <laughs> turn her white. And then um, and then yeah, by Terminator Genesis, it's it's a silhouette of her getting changed and you know a very sexy thing. You know, it's, yeah. With all due respect, she's not a sexy person. Linda Hamilton is is not, you know, by the second one, she's not playing, she's not sexy in any way, you, you know. 
I mean, that you probably find it attractive. In I, I find strong women attractive. You do so. find strong women attractive, but um, she's not supposed to. And and including that, see, you know, we're trying to, you know, what, Amelia Clark is that her name? Yeah. Um, you know, we know her from Game of Thrones. I'm sure she took that role to be like, I can play, I can play strong, tough as well, and action tough, and. How she didn't object to the scene. All oh, right, okay. In this scene, uh, you get changed, and we see all the curves. We see all, but you know, and and it's all it's all very arousing. And I think we did. We burst out laughing in that scene. It's yeah, yeah, just yeah. like this is this is so not Sarah days. Connor, and this is not not the Terminator. This is, and we're not looking at Sarah Connor as as an attractive one. We're looking at her as the the savior of mankind. There's no time for for this argument type of behavior. Yeah. But um, it was it was very very odd. Very very odd choice for that, and that, that, that film was from start to finish shite. Yeah, it's like a fucking poster child for abortion, basically. It man. was, yeah. Is, is that a possible thing? Do you reckon? Like, could you make a film that bad that, like, whatever it is, whatever it's archived, it's just fucking thrown in a fucking inferno, <laughs> and just like no one's subjected to it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was fucking erasure, fucking <laughs> wiped out. Wipe, but, um, wipe it out. It, on that point about Sarah Connor, that, that's another thing which Tim Miller brings up in, in that interview, and he's talking about uh, J- James Cameron speaks about how uh, important it was for him to have like strong female characters in his films. And you know, you've got it with Terminator, you've got it with Aliens, yeah. um, you know, you've got it in Avatar, and and he, Tim Miller said how important that is because there's not been really anyone any female roles on screen mm-hmm. in the last decade or so, which you think, oh, that she's fucking absolutely fucking kicking ass and taking names. I mean, yeah, probably... No stands out, do you? Yeah, it's probably even Thurman and Kill Bill, mm-hmm. but that's such... Done in a comic way, it's kind of... I don't know, I, I wouldn't put Uma Thurman next to um, Sigourney Weaver and Aliens. I wouldn't... Yeah, yeah. Th- those yeah. two don't even add up for me, but he, 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 they think Cameron... And um, and Miller think that they're gonna do something again to kind of light this fire of uh, you know iconic female leads mm-hmm. uh, again with with this film. But do I see it? No, I, I actually don't. I think I think they've done it. I think they've moved past it with Terminator Two, mm. and I think it was really they should have gone for new characters. I mean, the, the, the same talking about like a, a trilogy thing, like a, a, a trilogy of films and stuff. But really, it's. They're not. They're not really making a new film. That they, they say it's a passion of the baton. So it's almost this is a bridge film to mm. two sequels. Oh, we all know what that means. Force Awakens. So, yeah. So it. it's kind of you know they're trying to move into the these franchised sort of um, you know films, and it's like just make a standalone. And if it's good, it's good. How about Batman Begins? Mm-hmm. How about Batman Begins? Yeah, like mm-hmm. Nolan never fucking. Expected to, to get the chance to do the rest, but if they just focus on just making one brilliant film, and you know there'll be there'll be little bits of information that you can put into it, which kind of leaves things open ended, yeah. like you didn't terminate the one, and 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 you could get to that place without having to do a, a handover film, and then these two can cut them film shot back to back, you know what whatever they would end up being. I mean, I, I've got the gut feeling that. Doesn't matter how this film does, they will get made anyway. Mm. Yeah. So. Very much so. Yeah. I mean, on on paper, if you were not to see the trailer, well, before the trailer came out, I I was, I was excited as I could be for a new Terminator film with the with Tim Miller at the helm, because mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Deadpool. It, it struck all the right notes. He's got. Like you, like you were saying before, Matt, he's got the effects with the visual effect. So start again. He's got experience with visual effects. He's worked with Cameron before. He's made a really high grossing film in Deadpool that was critically well received. He got it all. He's also produced uh, Love, Death and Robots, which is very much, you could put that in the sci-fi horror kind of, yeah, realm. Yeah. That should be, I mean, if anyone were to mention that, you'd go, well, yeah, he's he's a young, exciting new director who can mm. supply a vision. But again, we go back to the trailer, and it's just it, there's there's nothing there to. It could it could have been the Fast and the Furious trailer, couldn't it? Like what, what, <laughs> yeah, have, yeah. The, whatever they shit out like, yeah. annually, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I think the cast 
Um, I can't remember her name. Mackenzie. Is it Mackenzie Davis? Oh, yeah. From Who's Blade Runner. Yeah, from yeah. Blade Runner. Or from Hot and Catch Fire, which you still refuse to watch. I just even though it's on Prime and it's fucking brilliant. And it stars Lee Pace. And you love Lee Pace. I think Lee Pace is quality. And he's the fucking best thing about it. Kind of. But... Uh, and she's also in my favourite episode of Black Mirror. All right. San Jupinero. San Jupinero. I don't think I've seen that one. Is it like in the 80s and she's got, she's got big glasses? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. Didn't even click that that was her. Yeah. I think it's her. That, were, that was the point where I stopped watching Black Mirror because it is. It I, is I, I need to check. I've, I've really seen I've just ne- I've just never made the connection when, I, when I've seen the trailer. I can't, I can't have another, uh, another fumble on a podcast. No, no, you, you, trust me. <laughs> don't waste your Wi-Fi or your, your data or whatever <coughs> your I've, got body I've got to know I need to see it I need to see it you just want to see a picture of it you fucking pervert <laughs> she is she's pretty but like yes. she, she's a brilliant actress and like she looks like she's embodying like kind of Sarah in, in T2 like she, she's obviously yes. taken on that role and you know, the rest of the cast um the, the Mexican fella who's obviously the, the, the new model T1000 I'm, I'm not aware of anything that he's been in no. um, or the other act- actors and actresses around it like you said it, it, it looks like it's leaning pretty heavy on um, previous members that, they, that they've used in other films which is kind of you know shit I mean I'm, I'm uh, the most thought that I can hope from this film is that Mackenzie Davis is Terminator doesn't have expanding tits <laughs> like in the fucking third one <laughs> so that was just ridiculous are we, are we going to be talking about the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one yes let's talk about them right now right now um the third one as you say um i think we uh, i think that's been the most anticipated film for a lot of people i mean yeah, yeah. terminator was massive and i remember how excited we were and yeah um at the time, I remember watching it at the time and being uh, slightly dis- I think the most disappointing for me thing for me at the time was I don't think the original score was used. Correct. And that upset was it me. Not? No, like like you know the, 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 at least <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah at least the notes of it. Um, yeah, I've, I've rewatched it since, and it it is it is just and I'll I'll start by picking up the good points though. Um, I enjoy the ending. I enjoyed the fact that they were only trying yeah. to, to do they weren't supposed to, you know, to win. They were supposed to just, you know, survive. Um, it, with the bombs going off at the end, I thought that was really good. Also, like the, the creepy throughout the film, you know, technology, everyday technology failing, you know, cash points and, and, and card readers and yeah. stuff. And I enjoyed those little bits. Other than that, that's about it. Um, you know, already, Arnie, even back in 2000. Three, was it he looked too old, didn't he? Even he looked then. too old then. He, he was, yeah. he'd had a heart surgery and everything yeah, before, yeah. and he, he looked too old. And um, that's about it. I mean, it, it was just it's just a rerun of, of the second film, the, really. Yeah, pretty much. What, what, one thing I, one element I enjoyed was I thought Nick Starr was a brilliant uh, cast, brilliantly as John Connor. I thought he was. He, he was an excellent John Connor. That was that was absolutely fucking nailed down. And I think the stuff he'd done before, like Bully, um, yeah. he was a bully. Bully, yeah. Is he in Bully, is he? Yeah. He's the bully. He's the bully. Is he? Yeah, yeah. that's him. That's how horrible he is. You didn't even recognise him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to re-watch that. Uh, but, but I thought Nick Starr was, was really good in that role. Um, uh, what was that? What was the bird's name? He was the term. Christina. Logan. Logan, that was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she fell off the face of the earth after yeah, that, she, didn't she? Yeah, she yeah. Yeah. Well, to be honest, if, I put in a performance like that. I'd do the same. Oh, she was. She wasn't an actress, was she? Was she another she, one of them? She a model. Was she a model? And I was just like, yeah. I mean, again, you don't really need much to play a Terminator. Just a, a stern face. But she even got that wrong, really. Self-inflating breasts. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the comedy of that film is just way off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, one of the things James Cameron was saying was in Terminator Two, essentially. He'd have massive battles with the editors because you know, the scene where he goes to the bar naked and then he gets the clothes and he gets the motorcycle and, and all that. He, the bit where he goes back and gets the sunglasses, puts the sunglasses on. All the editors, I think it was Mark Goldblatt and the other fella, um, 
I mean, the other guys, I think I just remember Mark Goldblatt because he did the first one. And, um, but they, they were having proper, like, fucking wars, battles about, no, you can't do it. He's basically, he's, he's, he's making himself from the first one within, like, 45 seconds and it's just two on the nose and Cameron wanted to play it. It's kind of like a cheeky, cheeky nod and what have you. Um, which worked, I think, with with the music they put on the bad to the bone and all that. I, it works great, and it doesn't it doesn't take you out of the film. Mm-hmm. No, it's, ca- it's all, kind yeah. of it's kind of like a nice nod, but not even a nod. It's like just a glance, and like and you're off. And then carry on. But that scene where he goes into that fucking shop, into the garage, into yeah, the yeah. garage, and he puts them sunglasses on. Mm. I'm I'm not even gonna say what he says because like. <laughs> I, I literally I just wanted to roll back out, out my seat and just fucking fall off a building <laughs> and just fucking crash like a fucking jar of jam on the floor. It was, it was fuck that. It was it was head and hands moment of mm. oh Jesus Christ. But like totally again like he's just done what he wanted to do there. He's mm-hmm. done oh this will be funny this mm. this will be good. He won't be expecting this. <laughs> No, we weren't. You're fucking oh, right, we weren't expecting it. <laughs> uh, for, for me, Ra- Rise of the Machines just seems more of a more of a studio-led film, like, made by numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah completely. And not really much... I mean, Jonathan Mostow, he, he's made... I think I've seen, what, two of his films? I can't remember the names of them. They, they were fine. But is he a big enough name to go against producers and say, no, I want this in the film, I want this, mm. this is how we make this? It, mm. it just seemed like a... Just another paid job for him. I mean, even the, the, the I mean, Terminator Two has got such a such a memorable villain. If you like, the, you know, the T One Thousand. You know, Robert Patrick. How how slight he is in that film. Yet yeah, he's he's menacing, mm. menacing as fuck. And then and then okay, Terminator Three. What's 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 bigger and badder than him? Oh, it's a woman. All oh, right, okay. What can she do? Oh well, she can connect to the internet via Wi Fi or whatever <laughs> she's got. And Mostal invented Wi-Fi. Like yeah, it. he did. It, you know, it, she can connect to Wi. She can control machines. You know, the the self-inflating boob thing. And then within the first one of the first scenes you see it in, we've got John Connor hiding in the corner of a room, and despite being this this honed piece of technology that shows she can't sense him in the corner of the room uh, when he's hiding in the back of the vet, and, and straight away, I mean, I know you've got to suspend your belief for. Mm. Most of these films, but it's just like you, you, you haven't thought this through, really, have you? Mm. No, she was as as you know as a bigger bigger badder villain, which they usually try and do with with sequels. She was she, there was not much different to her, really, was there? I mean, like you said, maybe it just wasn't well thought through at all. It's no. like, oh well, what 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 can we do to improve on Robert Patrick? Well, we've had Arnie; he's big. We've had Robert Patrick; he's slender. I know a woman. <laughs> yeah. It, no, it's it's not it's not about it's not about size or gender. Mm. It, it's about I, t- I don't know. It's <laughs> not about it size. <laughs> it's not about gender. I don't uh, know what it's. It's not I've, about size. I've just read out my Tinder profile. <laughs> 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 fucking hell oh, oh, shall please. we uh, shall we move on to Swift salvation on on it, before your we salvation we <laughs> <laughs> just before we move on I got a nugget of information last night which I thought was absolutely fucking brilliant James Cameron wanted Billy Idol to play the T-1000 originally <laughs> really? <laughs> really yeah and if you look if you google it there's um, some artwork of like you know with the with the Ike in the final scene when Sarah shoots the T one thousand and it's Billy Idol. It's Billy Idol. Wow. And then I found out who did the originally one for Kyle Reese. Three Saint McCauley Culkin. I, I it, it's a British pop star. Bowie? No, that would have been I fucking was say brilliant. Boy. Very close. He was, St- was it Sting? It was in Sting. Was Sting. Fuck <laughs> off, Sting. <laughs> Sting. Yeah, yeah. Sting versus Billy Idol. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Imagine that as a fucking scrap in the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking class. No, 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 that's exciting. Yeah. Imagine getting cast on them two now for the fucking, whatever this one's called, Dark Fucking Rum. Definitely <laughs> the Dark Rum. <laughs> What's he got? Billy Idol. Billy Idol. I'd pay money to see that now. Yeah. But if you, if you, if you, back in the 80s or whenever it was that he was. Big, 
if you look at his face, he's got like the same jawline as Patrick. Yeah. I mean, I don't think well, Patrick's been that good in anything since. Really, as that was kind of like mm, that was his, his yeah, that was his pinnacle. Billy Idol. Billy Idol, these things. Perfect day for a white wedding. What an after Yeah, begging it. Yeah, begging it. Giving it fucking time. Yeah. Uh, wow. I can't get my head around that. Yeah, I mm-hmm. cut on my head that, but Bowie, straight away, I was thought, thought, well, if you're thinking about Sting, mm-hmm. thinking about Billy Idol, surely Bowie came into the equation at some point. Imagine fucking David Bowie as a Terminator. <laughs> fucking scary as fuck. I, I kind of like to see him like be the embodiment of Skynet. Yeah, that would be. Almost the role of um, Helena, Helena Bonham Carter. Yeah. Uh, which leads us nicely on to Salvation. Segue right into it. Segues. Right. I'll, 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 I mean, you're a fan. So we'll do we'll do a fan, not a fan, a fan. We'll do a, a fan sandwich. All right. Game of tennis. Yeah. Like with, with Salvation, I think, I think Rise of the Machines helped me like mm-hmm. Salvation because it was just so dire and, and the expect, expectations of it were low. But in saying that, the build up, I was I was warming up to the the, the trailer for Salvation with Nine Inch Nails, uh, The oh, Day yeah. the World Went Away. Yeah, yeah. That's probably one of the best trailer tracks I've ever seen for a film about an apocalypse. An apocalyptic future. Mm-hmm. It, it just went so well, mm-hmm. and the cast was there: Bryce Dallas Howard, Christian Bale, Sam Sam Worthington was on a riding a, a, a popular wave, wasn't he? Yeah, mm. and it it looked it was it was the film that we all wanted since Terminator Two finished. We all want the want to, want to see what the, the future. future looks like. Now, although it wasn't the future we saw in Terminator Two. Mm. I think we we're all happy to accept that. Like any future is better than Terminator Three. Any future is better than the present. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it has massive flaws. It has massive yeah, yeah. plot holes. Yeah, yeah. But it's one of them films that I can I can look past. I can just go. Well, it was made with a bit of love. Mm. It, it was more than the, the first one. I think the only way Salvation can be classed as an achievement if you compare it to the third one. Yeah, 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 I agree with that. But if you take if you take Rise of the Machines out of the equation, then it's just another shit film. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's got massive flaws. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that people have seen it if they're watching this. And, mm-hmm. and kind well, of, it's been out long enough, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's not spoiling anything. But I don't know. It's got elements which you think on paper that's brilliant. Mm. Christian Bale is John Connor. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's great. You think Edward Furlong. I know. Nick Star technically doesn't exist, sort of thing. If mm-hmm. if we just, but Nick, um, Ed Furlong, Nick Star, to Christian Bale. That, that's kind of if you took them three across three films, and John Connor turned into the you know, leader of the resistance. That that's fucking brilliant casting, mm-hmm. isn't it? And that that would have been great on paper if if Cameron would have followed that through, and Salvation might have been the third. Would have been the third. Would have been, would have been the third film, but. It was good the way Arnie wasn't a big thing in it. He was almost just a CGI cameo. Yeah, mm. but that was pretty a cool. A benefit really from him not being in it. Yeah, it does. It gives everyone else more room, but there's just there's, there's action sequences in it where I just thought I was like, when Sam Worthington escapes imprisonment when he finds out he's a robot and all, a Terminator, a, a new newly developed model part, human organism part, Terminator, whatever. That sequence when he escapes that rebel camp, mm. I was just like, "What's going on here? This this, this fella's doing fucking hundred foot fucking jumps off fucking uh, motorbikes and stuff, yeah, and like yeah. mines going off, and mm. and uh, like that that whole relation, Moon Goblin's relationship with Sam Worthington, and she kind of falls in love with him, and I was just kind of like, oh. and it doesn't really it's, go it's, anywhere, does it? It's, no, it, it, no it's, it, it. But, it's almost got elements of Mad Max to it, that film. Like, what well, it is. It's, yeah, it's kind yeah. of is Mad Max. And, mm-hmm. and like, like, death's around every corner and stuff, but she's having time to have this fucking relationship with this fucking fella who's turned out to be a robot and she betrays everything that she's been raised to um, believe and go against it, to let him go and what have you. And 
you know, B- Bale is like for me, he was the best thing about and stuff. But there's massive holes in it. Do you, mm-hmm. know, do you know what I mean? Like it, unbelievable. Like, the, the thing for me that just stuck out, sticks in my head to this day, is at the end when they do the heart transplant. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they, they know he's a fucking Terminator, but yet you see them fucking sticking. Um, what's they call it? Like an IV. Like an IV yeah. in and and um, like like. Um, not, What's it called? Anesthetic, anesthesia. Yeah. Like he goes to sleep and all that. He's terminated. Just fucking cut the chest open, get the thing <laughs> out with it in. He's not asked. And it, th- I don't think there's anything to. Th- 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 there's no bubble in it to say that when he gets shot, it hurts him or anything yeah, like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. The only pain that he seems to feel is when he finds out oh he is terminated. Mm-hmm. He's a robot. The emotional pain. Yeah, the emotional pain. He's probably constipated. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't think of much more on salvation. You might be better to. Like, like, like you, mate. That I, I enjoy it. I think, I think you're right. I think because of what Terminator Three was, um, you know, having something that that tries to be a little bit different and and stuff, and you know, it's like a roller coaster. We went right to the top. Terminator Three, we went down. Salvation was like another another little upward turn. Um, try it tries to be different. It, as you say, it's it's not it's not perfect by any means. That. You mentioned like action sequences and stuff. The, the scene that always makes me laugh is uh, John Connor jumping out of a helicopter into the sea, and the next scene he's he's inside the submarine. Oh, it's yeah. like, I'm, <laughs> how are you doing that? Um, Not only was it in the sea, it was, it was a, a heavy storm. It was a heavy storm yeah. as well, and, and he manages to get, to get to the bottom of the submarine. Michael um, Ironside's in that. In, in, in that, that scene, yeah, yeah. Of the submarine. He is, yeah. Better cost him. Yeah. Um, but, there's some good points. I think um, one person we haven't mentioned, I think who's brilliant and also really, really well cast is Anton Yelchin as uh, Kyle Reese. Yes. He plays him so, so well. He does a good Michael Bean impression. He does, he? he does a fantastic, a fantastic job in that. Um, there's, you know, little elements like seeing, you know, because we're so used to the uh, T800 is mm. the first one in the yep. first film. Seeing, the, seeing is it 101? And then it's T800 in the second, I think. Seeing the uh, anyway, seeing the the previous the previous versions in, in Salvation, you know the ones before yeah, the yeah. Arnie term. They're seeing you know the, the proper cool, the proper rubber faces and the and the uh, you know the just the, well technically robots in human clothes and yeah. stuff. I, I enjoyed those little bits, um, and yeah, it's, it's very as you say nostalgic. You know, throwing Guns and Roses, you could be mine, and you know on, on the car stereo and stuff. Little touches like that, I quite enjoyed um, getting to see. Skynet base, you know, the, like the, the the city almost. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed that bit. Um, having Helena Bonham Carter as as the face was a bit weird for me. Um, I don't know. I would have preferred a face that you weren't used to. I think it kind of took me out of it. It's like, oh, Ed, we're going to get to see the face of of this 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 evil computer system for the first time. Oh, it's Tim Burton's wife. You know, it, it just it just kind compl- of makes sense. <laughs> it just took me out of it completely. If you know, an unknown actor would have done. It's just that, been that that shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know how Bowie is that would have been fucking. There you go. It, it, it should have been like uh, like was the boss. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it, it's it's not not a real thing. Fellow behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody gets to see the wizard. Not nobody know how. <laughs> nobody gets to see Sky Knight. <laughs> um, yeah, it just took me out of it, but. Overall, if I'm going to watch a Terminator sequel, apart from the second one, of course, um, I'd probably pick that up, and I don't really see that changing with the, the new one. No, I am the same. Mm-hmm. And, uh, for the next one, Round Boys, I, I've not, I've not seen Genesis. Oof. So, find yourself looking. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> you know what? I'll do. Actually, like, I already have. <laughs> like, like everything, I'll try and pick something good. I enjoyed. Um, the effects of uh, seeing the nuclear explosions right at the beginning of the film. That was Remember that bit? Yeah. Um, that that was about it. Um, the whole, the whole John. I suppose the only way you could. Uh, so, you, do you know anything about the film? Right? I've, 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 I've not seen it. I've not seen it. I refuse to watch it. I've, I, I remember Fair you, point. Jed, saying you read an interview with the writers, and they couldn't explain the. You know, their own ends into the film. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. I'm just for all that. I don't want any part of that. It is bizarre. The because they've had John Connor in it again. Um, the, I, I kind of flip flop on this. It's like what if if you insist on having John Connor in the film, 
what are you going to do with that character to make it to make it worthwhile? Turning him into a Terminator. I mean, that sounds like <laughs> that sounds like a twelve year old come up with it. At the time, I remember thinking, well, that's logically that's the only thing you can do with that character now is, is you know the, the future of, of humankind turn him to into one of them. But when you you have distance from it and you say that idea out loud in a in a room, it's it's like how did that ever get past? Yeah. How did through that ever get that through the filter? John Connor's a Terminator now. Yes, that's that's the idea. Sold for a buck. Sold for a buck. It's 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 a bad film. Um, is it Kyle Re- is Kyle Reese in that? Or is it? Did Jai Courtney play Jai, Kyle Reese? Jai Courtney. Yeah, yeah. He was awful. He was terrible. He was awful. I um, thought what's his name was bad in Salvation, Sam Worthington. Yeah, but this just took it, 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 it was it was there was just no chemistry between him and and Amelia Clark at all, and and the one thing Michael Bain and and Linda Hamilton had was was pure just chemistry, chemistry. It was pure, and it's just it's just awful. I did, I have bought it on. Uh, I was in Asda last year and I bought it for three quid. I thought I'm going to rewatch this. It's pricey that for that film. It is. I thought I'm going to. I'm gonna watch this again. Didn't flush that uh, Yeah, and it's still to this day sat on on. Um, it's not even on the shelf. It's in a box in the spare room in the plastic. I, I I've I've not got round to it, and I probably never will. When um, the police raid happens, that's what you'll go to prison for. Yeah, <laughs> that's what. I got. <laughs> and I say, if you're getting up to like for a drink or a little midnight snack, did you just hear like a little a, a, a faint drumming? Jumanji yeah, style, style trying to drag you towards it. Yeah, <laughs> the scrutinizers there. Scrutinizers, nothing, and he wants that copy of Terminator Genesis. It's it's awful. Uh, as I said, as I said earlier, start to finish, a shite film. I just think the third film, what they should have done, I had this idea ages ago. Black Hawk Down meets Apocalypse Now, and it's the journey from wherever the rebels are to getting into Skynet, and you just see that journey going to there. Him set, and it just ends with him sending Kyle back. You know I, mean? I like that. that, that yes. That's a pitch. Yeah. That's, that, that's it. That's all you could do with it. You see, you don't that's need... a war film. You've not seen a Terminator war film yet, have you? Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. simple. See, that's what you need. That's what the <clears throat> franchise needs, to put the Terminator brand in a completely different genre. Yeah. Mm. Like leave sci-fi alone. Yeah. Or just have elements of it. You don't have to concentrate solely on sci-fi and try, time travel. Yeah. And throw it into a war film. Because like you say... No one's ever seen a Terminator War film. I'd watch that. Did we not? Did we not knock around the idea of a musical when we were sixteen? <laughs> the Terminator musical. Do you not remember that? <laughs> Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> or watch. You remember that? But did that, did that, I that, dream that? But that, <laughs> I think you know, <laughs> I think I have. No, we definitely took. Anyway, just trying to make you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would, but I'd rather see that than whatever this next iteration would be. Hmm. But. Unfortunately, I think there'll, be, there'll come a point where we'll get to that place mm. and it'll probably be before we see a Terminator War film. Mm. And the irony is, it's what Cameron did with Aliens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he can't see that he could do it with Terminator. Mm. And maybe the budget would be massive. Maybe it, he thinks it'd be too big. But I, that assault, that journey to that complex to get in, I mean... Going back to Salvation, one of the things that bugged me was, so you go into Skynet, why would there be switches and keypads? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a little detail. I, I, yeah. I always remember in, in like the, the script for the, for the second one, when there's a flashback, that I don't think, I think it didn't even get, it got made or they didn't do the scene, but it described as all the architecture is alien. So how are you fucking getting in there? Yeah, yeah. Like, probably brute force. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're probably going to have to fucking drag a tank up and blow a hole and something to get in there or what have you but that's another thing another hole with salvation so to speak but I just think there'd be really cool ways that they could get around it if they actually sat there thought about it properly moved the genre on mm. you know you've got loads of different tropes that you can put in then that aren't specifically sci-fi-esque we know it's sci-fi but this is where it's got us to yeah. and this is what we're resorting to now well, I'm sold yeah Get this man to Hollywood, yeah, or at least the taxi to the airport, and I get his own flight there. I would like to come on board as executive producer. I have ten pounds in my bag. Sold. Yes. 
that's what that's the budget we're working on. What, that, what, that's the what, box. What, what, what role would you like within this new Terminator? I'll just I'll just be a. I'll just be musical advisor because I'm I'm presuming you still want the song and dance numbers in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how it okay. ends. That's how it ends. That's, that's how it all ends. That's oh actually the key to getting into Skynet because yeah. there's no there's no keypads, there's no buttons or anything. Mm. You have to it's it's a, it's a musical lock <laughs> you have to, sing <laughs> to get in. And it's it, it's a bit like uh, you get through one section, yeah, you gotta you gotta sing, but then the next section it's interpreted dance. Interpretive dance. You've got to sure. dance to the destruction of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting better. This is getting better. We should switch this off and start writing it now. We should really. We should really. Um, did you have some more talking points on that? I think. I mean, we've basically covered them all. I think. Let's have a look. You covered that last yeah. one pretty well. Yeah. I, just on, on on that point, do you think it might eventually return? We've j- briefly talked about the, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Do you think it could return to being a TV series? But we seem to be in we seem to be in the, the everlasting golden age of TV at the minute. Mm. And and there's there's some films and stuff and some franchises that are being being given the TV treatment. Um, I know we've had Sarah Connor. It it didn't do that well. Um, is is the scope for it to be a, a you know a Netflix series, an Amazon Prime series? Well, what well, would that be the, the the more acceptable daring way of of moving away from the, the the formula we've got now with the films? Just right, okay, let's focus on somebody completely different in that universe. And you see, I, I would like I would like <laughs> to see Terminator TV series, eight episodes. Mm-hmm. Set in the eighties, cash yeah. in on the Stranger Things, good Fans vibes, in there. and you can really have a lot of fun with the music, the special effects. I was going to say make it self-aware, but no, like keep keep it serious. I mean, you could even do uh, a rip off Quantum Leap. <laughs> 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 but it would work, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't obviously inhabit another character, but no, no. That worked, didn't it? What, what, 40 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour? Come with me if you want to stop the Yankees winning the World Series. (laughs) Right, we're we're coming up with all the pitches here. (laughs) Let's all go to Hollywood. (laughs) Wow. But it just makes you think, doesn't it? It's like... There's some plausible ideas that we've just had there Mm. in an hour. What, what, what's going on? What, what, what are well, it, it, it's, it's money, isn't it? It's like, what worked? Terminator 1 and 2. What should we do next? Terminator 1 and 2 again. I mean, it, when 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 they want them to make money, that's that's all they'll come back to. Mick G, of all people, had a go at trying to make something completely different um, and, and sort of failed. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, I mean, Terminator, to go back to Terminator, Genesis, they, they literally tried to reshoot Terminator One and have Terminator fused. Two fused into it. That that's how devoid of ideas that mm-hmm. film is. They just basically tried to, you know, Gus Van Sant it and remake it. Just yeah. add add the parts in it. So, you know, it's desperate times yeah, for Terminator. <clears throat> I think you can give it a shot in the arm though by giving it a little bit of freedom from like, to move it to telly. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's when you can get really, really creative, bring in new ideas. I, mean, I, I to be honest, I can understand why they haven't taken many risks with the films because it, it's a lot of money and the studios want guarantees. Mm. So yeah, there's you're going to be devoid of any originality because they're, they're scared of it. But you can experiment with it on mm. TV. Do you know what I like? Oh, I'll put this question to you. I think Neil fucking Blancamp. Neil fucking Blancamp. Would do a fucking far better job than anyone else out there. Oh um, yeah, uh, I, I, I know it's I know it's a terrible problem. film. Well, it's not a terrible film. It's just not a good film. But Chappie, the, the special effects there are absolutely outstanding. Uh, Elysium, like yeah. that's what he does best. And people are saying, "Oh, that's what that's what Tim Miller does." Like, well, you've made one film, mate, and you've you've overseen the development of a lot of special effects. I don't particularly like Deadpool. I kind of got the humour. Right. Didn't go to pictures for it. Um, I can see why it was so popular. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that's... I, I don't see how you go from 
you take the step from Deadpool to rebooting the Terminator franchise, I think that's... I mean, you, you could argue that with Deadpool, Tim Miller had a pretty easy job as Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool are one of the same person. So you just go... Mm. All you got to do is... Let shoot, him do his thing. Yeah, let him do his thing and you just make sure that the camera's in focus. Yeah. Well, as we said last week, for like the Marvel stuff, for all the directors that go into the Marvel uh, cinematic universe and stuff, we've all had to sit there and watch those credits for all you see how many people are involved in those films. Mm. And it's caught, it's almost, they're that big, they're that bigger enterprise that it's almost impossible for you to fail because they give you all the tools to go and do your job. You don't have to worry about the special effects. You know, like James Cameron, imagine what he was like with Stan Winston in Terminator 1. Mm. No, no, it's not quite right there. Mm. He, he's doing his job for him. Mm. And the same with the sound guy and whoever else. But I, I imagine like the, like, you know, the likes of the Russo brothers and Tiger with TD, they don't have to worry about that. They just mm. have to worry about getting performances, making sure morale's right. So all the elements are in place. And like, Tim Miller's probably had that on Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that, was that Marvel or was it, was it a Sony Marvel thing? It was Fox. Was it Fox. Yeah, before, Sony, the, uh, the, before the takeover, so. Is it Sony? Would that be Sony? No. Is Fox owned by Sony? No, Fo- Fox, it's Fox by, was its own thing. But now that's owned by Disney. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. Who, who, who would you want to see? If you could pick a director any any time. For Terminator? Yes. Yeah, and you want? Who would you pick for Oh, David Lynch. <laughs> a David Lynch Terminator film. Can you imagine it? Fucking no. No. He sent back to the 50s. To <laughs> <laughs> sent back to the 50s. Pick white fences. Yeah, pick up white fences and, you know, a very suburban America. And then, yeah, then you start finding the... Uh, microchips of, instead of ears. Yeah, microchips instead of ears. You know, female Terminators crying on stage. and stuff. That's that's the film I want to see. Marco Beltrami didn't score. Yeah, yeah. 100%. See, now that you've said it, I can't think of anyone better than Neil Blomkamp. <laughs> Not David Lynch. <laughs> Why? It's too much. Mate. Imagine Karl McLaughlin as a Terminator. That'd be fucking... There you go. It's, it's all... Really, wouldn't it? Yeah, right. We've got three pitches to take to Hollywood now. <laughs> all completely all, different all the... genres. <laughs> yeah. Musical. Musical. The Lynchian. The Lynchian version. And the highbrow, sci-fi, Halo-esque Neil Blomkamp. Let's go. Um, I think we should probably reconvene um, after watching Dark Fate. And yes, yeah, so it just dawned on me that I do actually have to watch Dark Fate now. You do, yeah, you do. We all do. You summoned us here. Yeah. Such yeah. talk. You signed up for it. Oh, I just fucked myself over on that one, haven't I? Again. Again. Yeah. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll we shall reconvene and uh, hopefully be a good experience. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm hopeful. I'm not really I'm not. that hopeful. I just generally, I just, I don't want to watch another shy film. Yeah, plenty more of them to come. Two pounds sixty at the Plaza on a Wednesday. Let's have it. It'll lessen the impact financially. Brilliant. Then it is a deal, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me today. No worries. On another fucking podcast. Mm-hmm. Now you're taking time out of your schedules. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. No worries at all. As I'm not very good at talking to camera by myself. <laughs> I, I disagree. I disagree too. Stop it, you guys. Right, everyone, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, or if you're listening on SoundCloud, thanks for listening. Ta-da. I love your sign-off. <laughs>